First of all, I'm gonna take a, I need to take a gift from my mom. She's, <laughs> oh, that's awesome, thank you. My mom still doesn't really know what I do. I tried to explain it to her, she like really has no clue. She still thinks I work at the movie theater. It's like, um, does this slide change too? Oh no, these slides do, this one doesn't, okay, cool. So, uh, oh yeah, first of all, I think slido.com is where the question, the Q&A session will be afterwards. If you log in with the hashtag South by Southwest, you'll be able to ask questions at the end. But here we go. So hello. Yeah, <laughs> this is kind of how I feel right now. Uh, this is a pretty big, intimidating crowd. Um, thank you, South by Southwest, for inviting me again. Uh, Thank you, Austin. Thanks for everyone who came and took an hour out of their day to watch a bunch of GIFs. Uh, so GIFs and the end of content. So uh, you might have just saw it that it was the end of content. I didn't actually, I, I misdid the title and I actually didn't think anyone would show up if, unless I put GIFs in it. But <laughs> it's kind of a packed crowd, so I guess people do wanna hear what the, the end of content is. So it's kind of clickbaity, but uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll talk about that in a second. So first, uh, a little about me, uh, me so that you guys know who, uh, what I'm about and what I think about and why all of this, things, this happens. Uh, everyone at the company gets an avatar made from them. And so this is mine because I eat a lot of popcorn and watch movies. So I'm not Alexa Chung. I guarantee you there's one person in here that thinks they're watching Alexa Chung right now. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint, she's like way cooler. Uh, we, we actually used to work together at MTV and we had the same email address. And so people kept emailing me. So I'd say probably half the time people hit me up on social, they think they're actually going out with Alexa Chung, which is like always disappointing. Um, so uh, I'm the founder and CEO of Giphy, uh, all the people that bring you all the gifts. We'll get into that in a little bit more. Uh, I live in New York City, I'm originally from Seattle. Right now it's pretty cold. If anyone's trying to fly back today, it's gonna be a little rough. I studied philosophy in school, but um, I couldn't get a job because as a philosophy major, like, no one really wants to employ you. Uh, so I went back to school for engineering, and my dad was a little bummed out, because he was like, engineering, does that mean you're going to just fix VCRs for the rest of your life? Which, I was, just this morning, I was like, oh, I guess he was kind of right. I'm like working on 80s video technology. So that's pretty much all I do. Uh, then I went back to school at, uh, for graphic design at Parsons for a little bit. I, went to, I did a stint in fashion school, um, for a year, and my mom, I was sewing a lot, and my mom, who has spent 10 years in a sewing factory, was like, what are you doing? You're paying to learn how to work in a sewing factory? <laughs> and I was like, oh, can't, can't, do, can't do fashion. Went to film school for a bit, uh, but that just taught me to be really pretentious, uh, so then I dropped out of that. I was on a snowboard team, but I don't remember any of it, because it was back in the day when we, ha we didn't wear helmets. So like, really, that whole era is just a super blank. I have no clue what happened. Um, for a few of you, uh, I'm, a I'm a black belt in gr uh, Gracie Jiu Jitsu, so I teach, nice, so uh, I teach a little bit in New York, if you're around, come by, uh, you can beat me up. Uh, startup, so this about, I've been a, in the startup scene since 1997, um, been a part of over a, probably a dozen startups, um, done maybe five or six myself, the most notable ones was uh, a social network that I created called The Fridge that went through YC a few years ago that got acquired by Google. A few others got acquired. Um, I lived in Mountain View for a really long time, which if you're from Mountain View, I'm sorry. Uh, I used to work at, started my uh, career at Intel. I was a hardware engineer for a while. Then I worked on music videos at MTV um, and then worked at Palom's Research Lab for a bit in Seattle, where I'm originally from. So just a little bit of background of what I do. Wanted to give you some of, just a little bit of uh, how I think about things. So, uh, I mostly like my thought process comes from just thinking about some ideas like, you know, most of them are pretty bad. I saw this GIF, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> like, it's genius. It's like, I need to get a dog to do that. Um, but I had this question like, why aren't printers clear? Like if they were clear, you could see the paper jam. Like someone needs to make that. Or like, you know, we have Uber, we have Seamless, but why, like, you know, like trick-or-treating is such a hassle in New York, why doesn't someone make a Seamless for kids for Halloween so they can just get other kids to trick-or-treat for them? <laughs> I don't know, someone needs to do that. Um, 
we have, uh, you know, you, in San Francisco, there's sourdough bread bowl soup bowls. And I was like, that's such a genius idea. You eat the bowl. But why isn't there a crouton salad bowl where you eat the croutons and the bowl? Anyway, dumb idea. So this is uh, some dumb ideas that I actually made. Um, there's this concept of a digital, you know, there's this idea of a velvet rope where people don't really want to be secret. They want you to think they're secret, but still kind of not let you included. So I made this thing called Blockout, which was popular for a little bit. And what it is is it um, takes a Unicode block character and a zero-width Unicode character and creates a binary um, code out of it so that you can upload all of your tweets as an encoded Blockout stream. So no one can actually see what you're talking about, but they know you're talking. And so, <laughs> and so this just gets everyone super frustrated, and they want to be your friends. And then they like, want to follow you, because they want to know what the secret code is. I uh, made another thing with the founder of Dots, uh, the, the, the really popular game that probably everyone here plays. Uh, in 24 hours, we made something, because we were a little lonely one night, uh, called TextPals, which was an anonymous text messaging pen pal service. And so what it did was every day you got a new pe pen pal from a text with randomized character names, and then you would talk to them and tell them like your worst confessions all day. Uh, we didn't know if it was going to work, but then it kind of blew up, and people were confessing. Like, when you, the, the, the truth we found out is people really like confessing things to people they don't know, as long as they're not going to know, like, ever see them again. And so uh, we have a log of all the, of, uh, all the texts. <laughs> Someday we'll publish them. But they're kind of crazy. So uh, one of the d dumb ideas that I had was an animated GIF search engine. I was like, couldn't find GIFs on the internet. And people were, I was like, why, why has no one done this? Why hasn't Google not d done this? So I, asked, I was talking to some of my friends, and I was like, what do you guys think of this? And they're like, that's the dumbest idea we've ever heard. But I ended up making it. So uh, we'll take <laughs> I was here in 2016 in a much smaller room. Um, some of you were here then. Uh, thanks for coming back. And let me talk, I just wanted to give a little recap of what we talked about, just to get you up to speed before we start getting into content. Um, so the, the topic was, why GIFs? And this is a summary of the entire thing in six seconds. <laughs> so I just made, I just did my entire presentation last, it was probably all you really needed to watch. You can probably all go back home now. Um, so, you know, we talked about why GIFs. You know, why were GIFs important? <laughs> like, but first of all, we asked, you know, are they GIFs? Are they GIFs? People keep asking that question. Uh, I had to explain that this is a GIF. Um, this is a GIF. This is a GIF. This is a GIF. Uh, ultimately, we, we determined that no one really cares. Um, except people in San Francisco really care about this. I'm not really sure why. <laughs> On a side note, uh, Sandy Trevor and Steve Wilhite, the, the CTO of CompuServe and the uh, creator of the GIF format, emailed me last month. And they were like, what are you guys doing with this GIF thing? Can you?" Can you set people straight and tell them it's GIF? And I was like, yes, you are totally right. That was GIF in the 80s. And we talked, big fans of theirs. We're actually going to hang out and have drinks later. They were totally cool with us calling it GIF now. So uh, I think those guys said it was cool. So we can say GIF. So please don't kill me. Um, what are, we asked, you know, what are GIFs? They're just short, silent, looping videos. They're not that big of a deal. Uh, they're short, so they're small, they're silent, there's no sound. They loop over and over infinitely, and they're actually just videos. We, we asked, you know, why are they important? Because why they're important, just to go back, is uh, the printing press democratized information. So before we had the ability to mass communicate all of humanity and our hopes, our dreams, the stories of, of history, the printing press was really the only way to get that out to the mass public. And then what came, what came along was the internet, which made everyone, well, most everyone, not actually everyone, probably half the world still, someday, um, connected and, and have information available to all of them. But, you know, we were asking, you know, what really is the internet, <laughs> besides a way to send tacos across the internet? Um, 
the internet really is, and pr the printing press and any kind of digital information is really just a transcoding of everything that you see in the world, of every hope, dream, aspiration, history of humanity, people, animals, all of that, and it's transcoding all of that into just text. And so when we think about that, you know, this is the world, this is the best technology we've had for a while. It's encoding everything we see in color and life and time into black and white characters on, on, uh, on white paper, right? So just fundamentally from like a, a technological point of view, text is just a really bad uh, compression algorithm. So it, it, the, the number of bytes you can fit in abstract words isn't that much. Um, if you, well, I'll go back to this. So if you, if you take um, the average size of like a, a one page of text is maybe a few K. Uh, our average gift size is about five megs. So you're talking about exponential amounts of information. It takes me, I am read really slowly, it takes me about five minutes to read a page. But I can, I can watch and I do like thousands of GIFs within a second. It's just they're all on the page. And so I'm just consuming a lot more information. So it's just a much better uh, a transport mechanism for information. And then if you're trying to transcode this, you know, things like this and this, this is the coach of the Mexico soccer team who's like the craziest guy. <laughs> <laughs> like all of romance and love, <laughs> I, think <laughs> I think Arnold Schwarzenegger was here. I hope he's not here today. <laughs> and we're, we're transcoding all of that into just this text, and that just really is not the most efficient way to, to communicate all that information. Um, last time we talked a little poetry. Uh, we got a little poetic. We gave a shout out to cinema because cinema was the first kind of form to take time and really capture the human essence in some kind of format. And we talked about how cinema is really composed of a bunch of shots and the shots into scenes. And really, GIFs are just these cuts that are put. They, GIFs are really the Legos of all kinds of visual communication. What we had was before is, you know, you had a long film to convey human emotion, but now what we can do is we can convey that emotion in a few seconds. Six seconds. Um, and what we're doing right now with Giphy is we're creating an entire lexicon of all of the expression and emotion and information that is a part of uh, humanity throughout the years, not in text, but in a, in a more compressed, more real, more human format. That's why we call Giphy a humanist search engine, which is a weird thing to say that no one really understands what I'm saying. Uh, so we also asked, you know, why are they popular? And really, like, we understand this. It's, it, we're in a mobile world. We have screens in our pockets. We're communicating all the time. We have the, f the f first time in history the ability to take a piece, a shot from a film, an emotion, uh, a shot from a movie, and send it to someone anywhere in the world and have it show up in their pocket. That, like, has not happened yet. And so the ability to send small shorts of inf uh, cuts of information, aka GIFs, has never really ha wouldn't have been possible without mobile being first. Also, when we send a lot of messages. The number one thing that we do as humans um, that has come out is like, it's communication. It, we spend more time, I think, like 80% of our time communicating with other people. The internet is mostly just about communication, too. So you can see, like, we, we want, and text and emojis were the only ways that we could communicate, but we, we needed better transport mechanisms to, do, to convey all the meanings that we, all the, all the thoughts and desires we had to other people. And GIFs are just the next evolution of that, because again, it's a better compression format, and it better represents the, the thoughts and feelings we're, we're, we're feeling right now. We also in an, are, in a, are in a new world of entertainment. So we've, because of the democratization of, of entertainment, meaning that you know, you, we have YouTube, we have all these platforms for entertainment, we have now the ability for people to create content. You know, we have Snapchat, Instagram and be able to take that content and send it instantly to other people. So you're taking selfies, but you would also want to take video because, again, you're expressing more of what's going on in the world. Um, so uh, this is a funny thing where democratization of expression, what that means is we were never really, like we, the writers and the filmmakers were the only ones that used to be able to express themselves through large groups of people. Uh, unless you were fluent in the, in the, in the tools of expression, it was very hard to represent who you were to the world without being an expert in one of those tools, in an art. Uh, I know this because a lot of my friends' moms, um, I do a lot of IT for them, like if their computers break, they, I, I feel like I'm like the only person they ever call. Uh, 
And they send me all these gifts. And they're the funniest people, but I would have never known they were that funny, except they will, they'll throw these random gifts from some movie, and I'm like, oh, wow, you're like the funniest person I've ever met. Uh, but they just never had access to the ability to express themselves without the evolution of, of mobile, of messaging, of gifts, and the ability to take those gifts and send them. Also, Flash. Um, if you think about it, Apple killed off Flash, and Flash was really the only auto-playing format on, on uh, any kind of devices for a really long time. And so when the mobile phones became popular and Flash died, you needed a format that auto-played. And the GIF was the only format that actually did that. So that's one of the reasons why, why uh, GIFs are really popular, is Flash kind of got replaced by the GIF format, which sounds really weird. Um, you'll also see, like, evolutions in the GIF format that are more interactive that will take place because Flash also created a whole level of interactivity that's still missing. We also asked, you know, are they safe? Uh, we talked about this thing called gifnosis, which is the power of the GIF to, to put you in an endless loop over and over and over again and kind of brainwash you in a little... <laughs> and, uh, which is like a, a funny thing, but was a serious thing, but was a funny thing. And then we also talked about like why cat gifts were so popular. Uh, all has to do with brainwashing. It was like, yes. <laughs> we could talk about that some other time. So uh, that was just a recap of 2016, so everyone's caught up now. Um, so Giphy. So it's, uh, we're five years old now. Never thought we'd make it this far, but it's awesome that we're here. And then we were thinking, I was like, five years? That either means we're, we're, we know what we're doing and we're in grad school or we really don't know what we're doing and we're like a fifth year senior <laughs> and no one's really like kicked us out of school yet. Um, so we were the first GIF search engine. We, we, we invented that term. We also like, uh, we always forget like, w w when we sit back and think about Giphy, we're like, oh yeah, we just made a lot of these things up like expression search, expression engine, sending express, like we just kind of made that stuff up. So a lot of the things like a GIF API, um, all the things that you're seeing, were just weird things that, like a crouton salad bowl that we just kind of thought up and made out in the world, and now they're pretty popular, which is cool. Um, what is it? You know, what are we really doing? So, we're a search company. If anyone asks or, th or is wondering, like, we are really a search company, and people say, wait, wait, like, you know, isn't there already one of those, and aren't they, like, the biggest thing, and how, are, how do you even compete? Why are you even bothering? Um, because, Google was invented you know, 20 plus years ago uh, in a different world when Netflix, when social media, when entertainment didn't exist on the internet. There, Reddit, all of, the, all of the sites that we use now, Instagram, Snapchat, none of that existed back then. Uh, Google was invented that 20 years ago. It was just an academic tool to, to index research papers. So you know, we didn't have this, you know, we didn't have, <laughs> that's actually like a real shot, which, I, we were like, is that Photoshop? And it, no, it's not. <laughs> so, it, like, we, we didn't, there was no entertainment on the internet. The internet was not entertaining. It was like, you went to the library. I was there. I remember using Mosaic. Some of you were there. Most of you weren't born yet. Uh, and you went into, like, and opened up this web browser, and you saw, like, two pictures and, like, a bunch of text. Um, it was before messaging. Like, messaging really changed the world, where we are now in a mobile context where the messaging really is the UI into the internet. It's no longer really web browsers. Uh, that didn't exist when Google uh, had first thought about indexing the internet and creating a search engine. So if you look at Google from 1998 to now, this is what it looks like. Uh, this is the change. As you can see, nothing's really changed. Um, but the world and everything we've, we've done in the last 20 years has been a big shift, right? So this is Giphy search for Hungary. Uh, Hungary is not something that an academic would really search, so if you look on Google, it's really about academic research papers on famine, but really when we talk about Hungary on the internet, most people are thinking about top ramen. <laughs> maybe not, maybe that's just me because I'm, I used to eat a lot of it. But you're thinking about, their search should be more visual, entertaining, more represent, uh, re representative of the media that's actually out in the world. So when we talk about, you know, is Giphy a, a new type of search company? Yes, this is, this is our premise that search is fundamentally different than what it was. So what's going on? So, you know, how is this working out so far? So these are our numbers. Um, we'll go over them a, a second. Like, uh, 
these are some updated numbers. So we serve over five billion gifts a day. That's like five billion. So like, that still is a pretty big number to me. I, don't, I tried to put it on my calculator in my phone and it won't do enough num zeros. And so then I have to do the, the math to divide. We hit about at least 300 million people, uh, unique people, see a, are delivered a gift from Giphy every day. That's like the size of major countries. It's kind of crazy. Um, Monty is even, even crazier, but we're still working those numbers out. So that ends up being about 8 million hours of content watched a day at minimum. And that's like a lot, a lot of movies. I mean, like you'd have to sit there and you'd have to sit for a really long time and watch everything. So that's, so uh, we did some math and we found out we are now doing 10% of the volume of Google searches every day. And we thought when we did this math, we were like, wait, <laughs> that totally sounds wrong. Uh, but we, uh, we were like, yeah, we were like, no. <laughs> I was like, maybe 0 0.01. And so we quadruple, and then we checked it about 20 times, and then we're like, oh no, <laughs> what do we get ourselves into? Uh, we're, we're actually doing that much volume now, which is a little crazy. So we'll talk about Giphy a little bit more uh, in a second, but I wanna talk to you about now the future of content. Cool. So you're gonna have to follow me with this. This is a little new. Um, so what's happening? I'm not sure what's happening in that Giphy there. <laughs> That's like when I was like, what's happening? I was like, wow, I have no clue what's going on. So this is probably perfect for that. Um, democratization of content. So we talked about this earlier. So content, like right, because content now is easily available, it's like we've created digital printing presses everywhere. If you look at the slope of the, the growth of content, it's going exponential right now. So every day there's infinite amounts more of content being made. So really content, content now, has kind of reached peak in, like infinity. There's just infinite amounts and infinite amounts growing more every day. It's just not, it's just endless amounts of content. But at the same time, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was looking at this gift for a long time, and I was like, you can't deny the Hasselhoff. Um, at the same time, millennials are consuming 18 hours of content every day. I was like, how is that possible? Then I was like, let me time what I'm doing. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like you're in bed, you're watching content. So because we have mobile phones and we have content devices on ourselves, we can consume, so you have this two trends of we're creating infinite amounts of content, but we've also maxed out on the amount of time we can watch content every day. So what's gonna happen? And that's where you know, our consumption of content is now is at 100%. Like everyone's consuming content every moment that they can. So have we reached the end? And that's the title. If you were uh, uh, a political scientist, uh, I read this book, uh, Francis Fukuyama wrote this book, End of History and the Last Man. Uh, and so this was kind of just a take off of that. And then we found out that like, it's not the end of history. There's China, there's Russia, there's all these things going on. So it really is like content. Is this the end? Like, if, there's no more con if there's so much content, but there's no more time for people to, to, to consume content, is the whole industry done? Like, is it over? Like, uh, is, is, did Netflix just win? Like, are, is, should we just like not bother making content anymore? Uh, and then advertising, like if you can't advertise against the content, is advertising done? Is it you know, a few companies that can afford to advertising and then it's all over? Like is, have we really reached the end of anything interesting? Um, so we're thinking like how do we think about this? How do we model all of this content thinking, right? And what we came up with was what we're calling the real estate of content. Okay, you gotta follow me here. <laughs> so 24 hours in a day, right? It's fixed, it's zero sum game. It's just very similar to real estate. There's fixed real estate, unless you move to Mars, but we don't really have a Mars of content. Maybe someone can make that up, I'm not really sure what that is. Uh, so you have prime real estate. That's really prime time. It's eight to nine, nine to 10, you know, that's when everyone's competing. It's, it's really, uh, you know, if you think about it, it's, the Malibu of content, which Netflix kind of owns that. You know, Game of Thrones, when it comes back, will own that as well. So really, Netflix is kind of the Malibu of content. It's the place that you, everyone wants to live. It's the best location. Everyone, it's very short supply, and um, they're defending it like fiercely. So there's this housing crisis right now. Uh, this is a wave pool in Korea. It's crazy. <laughs> 
So uh, there's a housing crisis going on right now because there's just not enough space. And so the way that we think about it is, you know, what do you do uh, when you need more space? You either make more money, which is tough because Netflix has all the money. Like they spent $8 billion or, uh, last year on content. Like Giphy can't compete with that. No one can compete with that. Um, so in New York, you know, coming from New York, uh, we know all about housing crises, crises. And we know how, what, you know, all the things that we have to do when there's, uh, housing is in limited supply. First thing is you get, you have to move into an apartment and get roommates. That means things have to get smaller. So content has to shrink, and then you have to share content space, right? So really, you know, whose sponsored content really is that roommate that you get? It's the, it's that roommate you find on Craigslist that pays the rent, but you don't really like to hang out with them, but you kind of have to put up with them because they pay their rent. Um, if you can't, if you don't want to hang out with roommates, then you have, to, you have to go into urban sprawl and move out to the suburbs. Uh, but suburbs are one of those places where it's kind of nice, you know, it's cool, it's not so exciting, it's totally fine, you can live there, things are a little boring. Uh, and that's Facebook. Facebook is kind of the suburbs of content. That's where you go when things are cool, they're okay, not so exciting, but you can hang out. So if you, if you don't want to hang out in the suburbs, you know, where do you go? You have to move out to the country. What is the country? The country is like vast open space where there's nothing going on, but it's really beautiful landscapes and you'll take a drive through it. You don't really want to live there, but you will live there. Uh, it's like all the people that move up way, way upstate New York because they just can't take the city. So you know, I was like, what is, the, what is the country of content? It's really daytime TV and soap operas. Soap operas are beautiful people doing things that are really boring. Like, it's, it's stuff that you leave on, on uh, the TV while you're doing laundry and other things. I, I used to watch Days of Our Lives when I was in high school just because I was doing homework and it was like something that wouldn't distract you from anything. That and MTV ends up being like the best things to do when you really don't want to pay attention. Um, so, you know, this hasn't really been, we'll talk about this, but the internet really hasn't taken advantage of daytime TV yet. So uh, another thing that happens is, if you don't want to live in the suburbs, you don't want to live in the country, you don't want to get roommates, you have to find alternate housing. Uh, this is funny because I had uh, uh, someone I know started renting vans from, uh, from like, uh, the rental car agency in New York and putting them in, in uh, parking lots and then putting them on Airbnb. <laughs> so, so as like single, single studio apartments. Uh, Actually, like, it's a huge industry, and, and, and the government's shutting it down right now, um, and he had to leave the country. Uh, but, <laughs> but the whole point was, sometimes you have to be creative about where you put the content. And, you know, it's alternate content is what you're seeing right now. People are AR, VR, that's where they're putting content into IRL space. Because they they're like, oh, actually, I can just layer content into the current space that we're in. So you're getting, seeing creative ways of making everything content. So that uh, you know, begs the question, what is Reddit? <laughs> and I was like, oh, Reddit is that, in, in, in terms of the real estate of content, Reddit is that weird place downtown that you don't really tell anyone that you're going to, that you, <laughs> you're a little afraid at, of night to go to, but everyone still goes. Um, it's like that late night public access show. I used to watch this show called Tea Time for Kwan, which was a guy that looked like my dad, who would just have tea and then invite his neighbors to come and hang out, and they would just drink tea and and talk for an hour on public access at 2 a.m.? Yeah. So, uh, you know, the question also is like, why do we live in New York City when all of this crazy housing is going on, like this crisis? It's because it's super entertaining. Everyone's super angry, like this girl here, but <laughs> she's super, um, she's definitely entertained, right? So, uh, future of content, I just wanna recap. Uh, it's gonna be expensive. So if you can pay, if you're Netflix, you can play in the prime time slot. The rest of us can't do that, so we need to start shrinking. We need to get roommates. We need to, get, we need to start going smaller, six seconds or less. Why six seconds? So if you look at the average attention span, it's about eight seconds right now of, of, uh, of kids. The average shot length in a movie is about four seconds. So if also the average Facebook video that's being watched, even though the average video length is about three to four minutes, the average time that it's actually watched is 10 seconds. If you want to follow where the money is, the average video view of what's being registered as a video view is three seconds. So if you're talking about you know, how small can apartments get, it's about six seconds. You know, it's going to be under six seconds or less is really where we can start targeting how big, um, 
how small content can get. Also, it has to be ubiquitous. That means you have to go from Netflix to the suburbs to the country. And so you have to, do, you have to move your content out of prime time and hit the other hours of the day. So what we're talking about is we have a concept at Giphy that we call 23-7, the 23 hours you're not watching Netflix. And content hasn't really been targeting those hours yet. You start seeing things that, like that happening right now with HQ, things that are coming more out during the day. But a lot of what we do is we want to make content small enough to slip in all the cr into all the cracks during the day when you're not watching other engaging content. So we're, we're really just filling in all the blanks. Another thing is it has to be passive. So this is the country, right? So passive is a lot of people right now are, are talking about oh, we want more people in our app. Uh, you know, Snapchat does a really good job. They're at like 40, 45 minutes per engagement. But if you think about TV, daytime TV, people are still watching four to five hours of TV a day. That doesn't mean that they're watching it engaged. They're watching it in a passive kind of mode. It's on in the background. And so really, no one, no one has really been talking about dynamic kind of attention spans, where sometimes you want TV that's super active, and sometimes you want it super passive. And so you're going to see a range of content going in between that gradient between when, when you want to be entertained, it's going to be entertaining, and when you don't want to be entertained, it's going to be very passive in the background. So a very passive notion of content is going to happen. And you're going to, get, you're going to start seeing people watching digital. Instead, so like Snapchat's doing a really good job right now. So you'll see them, instead of 40 minutes, you'll see two hours, three hours, people hanging out, because a lot of the content will be more passive. So everything will become content. You know, like er anything and everything. So when I look around right now, you know, there's no content here. There's a few pieces. But in the future, every piece, everyone will be content. Everything will be content. There will be AR layered everywhere. We have all of this real estate in real life that we haven't taken advan advantage of. And also, everything has to be entertaining. Because if you're going to live in a place like New York that's super crowded and angry, unless it's entertaining, why are you there? And so your content's going to go out in the world. But if it's, unless it's entertaining, no one's going no to even bother to watch it. Uh, this was just my hate on Malibu a little bit. Like, no one really wants to live in Malibu. Like, I, I went to Malibu once, and I was like, wait, this is what Malibu is about? There's, like, no place to eat. Uh, the beach is so cold, you can't even swim there. Uh, there are, like, no, there's, like, no way to get to the beach. And I was like, this is just, like, not fun. Why do people talk about Malibu? Uh, so that's just my take on why we should all move to the country. Uh, so future of advertising. We'll talk about that. Like, like, we know because of the content shrinking, being ubiquitous, going everywhere, filling the cracks, that advertising has to follow suit. And uh, the future of really advertising is really when advertising and content are about the same thing. We'll talk more about that in the future, hopefully. So next on Giphy, so I want to put this in context um, of what we talked about, of what Giphy is doing. So, you know, we... So we deal in anything micro. So we are all about micro content, micro entertainment. We, we know the world has to, content has to shrink. And so you know, the first thing that we put out was GIFs. So this is actually the first GIF ever put out on CompuServe. Um, so we deal in GIFs because we knew that years from now, all the content was going to shrink. And we were seeing that. Like Facebook and YouTube have both em embraced six second ad formats. Everyone is moving to a shorter ad format, and everyone's moving to a shorter content format. And we, we, we've been doing this for five years now. We also have started embracing stickers. Uh, we, if we talk about, you know, we, if GIFs really are these nouns, stickers are these adjectives that you put on top of other things. This is a, a notion of making everything more content, right? Short form content. We've also, these are ads that we've produced in our studios in LA. We have a, um, it's called Giphy Studios. We have an office in LA that creates uh, advertising for our clients. And so these are some examples where advertising is super short. Everything here is six seconds or less. And it's very high produced. And this is really the future of where advertising is going to go. Um, we also have a video platform coming soon, which we'll talk about. It's a very short form video platform, but you'll see that coming out this fall. We're also working, uh, we have this thing called if we're talking about passive content, things that you see in the background when, that aren't going on. So we have this thing that we launched four years ago. It's just a side project. It's called Giphy TV. And people, it does hundreds of millions of views right now uh, a month. And it's in people's screensavers. We put them out. We have auto-programmed channels like the Puppy Channel. And people will just leave on the Puppy Channel all day in the background so that they're happy. They'll put the Cat Channel just to get angry. 
Uh, and people will put all these other ch channels up, and we, we've kind of created this product. We'll come out with this in the fall, but it's a way to consume more passive content all day. Ubiquitous, so you know, we, we really are about, like we talked about 23-7. We are, the whole strategy that we've done is to put, put in the framework to put content ev everywhere. So that's why we've integrated in every possible app that you've ever seen, because we're laying the, f uh, the foundation so that we can get you content during those cracks during the day, because you're in different apps, switching apps on your phone, on TV, on billboards, anywhere you are, that's kind of been our strategy, is we, want, we need to be, embrace content being ubiquitous everywhere. Um, everything is content, so we're really focused on trying to also think about how do you make everything into content? Um, this is, we put out an AR app, a VR app, we turn text, so we're layering content into the world. We're also turned speech into content, so when you talk, we auto-generated this uh, with Giphy Says, these words into a uh, text message so that they could be sent. We brought celebrities into our studio and we turned them into content. So instead of their content that they're producing, we're making very short form, six second content uh, with some of the, our friends that come into the studio. And these, these are just, Tommy Wiseau is looking funny at it. But like, this is like a perfect example of who Tommy Wiseau is. And he, this is content that he's been using himself and it's very short, and it's really taking the essence of the celebrity and making them a piece of content. Uh, Demi Lovato, she came into the studio. She's great. We took sign language, and we made it content. You know, we, like we're just taking pieces of information and things that you wouldn't really think were content. And this, these, this uh, sign with Robert has gotten over hundreds of millions of views on our site because people are sending these and learning how to do sign language via GIFs. Uh, we also have Giphy Arts, which is our Art Center, we've, we're going, we have over 10,000 GIF artists that are making content every day and we're pushing the limits of taking art and making it content that people can send. Advertising, you know, can we make, and that's the big question, can you turn advertising into content? And that's exactly what we've done. You, you probably haven't seen, uh, you've probably sent some type of advertising via GIFs in some form or the other because most of that content is branded. So we're also going to, we're also going to uh, come out with a lot more soon. Um, <laughs> just a funny guy. <laughs> like this, I was like, this is like the greatest machine ever. I'm gonna go running and eat tomatoes <laughs> all at the same time. So we have a lot more coming on uh, very soon and I wanted um, to talk to you about, <laughs> so I was just like still laughing at this guy. <laughs> like, I swear, like what is this? So, you know, what, what it is is like, this is kind of the essence of Giphy. We just try to think up the weirdest things possible, uh, things that we really like. Our philosophy is make things for ourselves, and if, it's, if we think it's funny, someday people will think it's funny. Uh, maybe not originally. So uh, another thing that we really focus on, it, again, like we were talking about in terms of content, is everything has to be entertaining. Like, if you come to an office, you really want to be entertained. So uh, our, when we come to work, we want to entertain ourselves. And so and every piece of content that we're doing has to be entertaining. If it's not entertaining, then it's not really that interesting to us. So again, infinite amounts of content, everything's getting short, small, there's a ton of it out there. It all has to be searchable because there is a new, again, like that's all going into the new search index and there hasn't really been a, a search company that's been built except for us that was really tackling that kind of problem of entertainment. And, well, I should say, within the context of entertainment, communication, search. So right now, like you see a lot of the mergers happening. It's entertainment companies mixing with communication companies because that's really the content and the distribution that are being merged into one company. And it's because we are in a messaging world where the content is all entertainment-based and all of that is searchable. So really, it's this mix now of entertainment, communication, search. This is all being combined into one kind of thing. It's all being the same thing. It's one way of saying, you know, if we're talking about the medium as the message, the message now is really the medium. It's all, it, it really is about the content. And so, you know, the future of Giphy, what we like to think of the company, it's, it's all really about MTV 2.0. It's, we need a company, if we could, MTV kind of defined an entire generation of not only from like the zeitgeist of what was going on, but they took this small old format that everyone thought was useless, the music video, that no one thought you could make money out of. They turned it into a communication tool for creative people, and then it took over an entire generation. 
And what we want to do is we want to reimagine what would MTV be like if they created a search engine, if they, created, if they were to be a, another type of platform. And so what we're, our mission really right now is to create a new type of entertainment platform, something that mixes everything that you're going on, because again, search now is the same thing as entertainment, it's the same thing as content, it's all the same thing. And so we really want to create an entertainment platform, which is a search company. And whoops. Because, uh, oh, just one note on this, it's, it's really because one of the things we believe is that no one's, like, the act of searching itself right now really isn't fun. It's, it's like you go and it's a very um, academic kind of thing. But search should be fun. Everything that you do should be fun. So we, we want to mix search with entertainment. We also want to put it within a context of messaging, because that's, again, the number one UI that's out there. So really, we, we, we a lot of times talk about inside the company about a search entertainment company, because when search itself is the entertainment itself. So uh, in the real estate of content, I, I don't know if that was a skunk or a cat, <laughs> or like a dog with like a big thing. You know, what, we, what we think about is content for us is a public utility. It's not, content really isn't for us when we think about it, Malibu, the suburb, the country, but it really is more like electricity. It is a, a utility that is distributed everywhere. And what we've done is we've laid the, the infrastructure and the pipes to get content everywhere. And so Giphy's mission is really make everything animate. That's, uh, that's actually like ingrained in our uh, philosophy which is kind of funny because uh, we were like, oh, animated means bring good things to life, which is exactly, oh, went backwards, what GE's motto is. So we are, the, we, what we really want to be is the electric company for content on the internet. I'm gonna show you a couple things. Thank you to all these artists for making these gifts, supplying these gifts, uh, our partners. Thanks everyone for listening. Um, I want to, I do want to show you a couple things that will be interesting. So, well, a couple of funny things. So this is a funny gift, the world's largest human domino <laughs> mattress. <laughs> There's, <laughs> here's just a cat or a, a bunny chilling in a, in a, a sink. So uh, I also want to show you uh, some unreleased products that we're about to release. Um, for the people that stayed. So if we're talking about micro entertainment, this is like, we, what we do is we do a lot of R&D research uh, in the company. And this is just something, a couple fun things that we've been playing with for the last couple of years. So, yeah, so what is this thing? So we're, you know, we're experimenting with like ways to create hardware and uh, ways to create, or sorry, ways to create content in different ways to create content. And this first thing that we were playing with for the last couple of years is, what would our take be on another consumption device, our creation device? And so what this is is, this is our first kind of experiment in creating a hardware device. What it is is a, it's a disposable camcorder that you can take and make gifts from, six second gifts. Uh, something that we've been playing with for a bit. But, and so this is what it looks like. Uh, the whole notion is like you go to a party and these are just like, like instant, you know, in weddings if you go, they'll give you the disposable cameras and you'll put them out and then you'll take photos. But we're like, but you don't capture the emotion or the crying or the, the joy of this moment. Why, why can, we need to be able to do this with a video camera. And so this is our version of it. It's been pretty fun um, working on. We got one funny thing t to show you as well. So, uh, you know, if you're going to make content, how do you display it? Like, how do you, what, is, what would a physical GIF look like? What, what, what would it look like? What would it be, what would an IRL GIF look like? And so we, we, we figured out that would make something to create content. Like, going back, you know, we're very 80s, so, you know, going back to, like, a cassette Super 8 camera where that makes, like, a little, we, it took forever, it took months to make that sound because we wanted to feel very, like, and the, the, uh, 
the, like we're all, a bunch of us are har hardware engineers, so this is really fun, but that sound actually does nothing except it's just a motor that just makes the noise. <laughs> uh, yeah, it took three different motors to make that noise right. So this is, we were like, okay, we did that. And then what do, what, you know, how do we display this thing? And we're like, I wonder if we could make, uh, like if I could hand, if I could hand someone a GIF, would that, that would change, like when um, instant film came out on the market, it changed the way that we interacted with content. It was a physical note, like a physical thing to hand someone something, a picture that you took of them and you gave it to them. And so we were coming up with this concept of, if that doesn't exist in digital, like if you hand someone your phone and that seems really weird and then they flip through all your like private photos and that's really weird, we are like, how can I give them a piece of content? So we made this thing um, and it seems like it's fake, but I have a couple here. I don't know if you can see it. So, um, so these are two. These are um, two and a half millimeter thick hardware gifts. You can shake them and they will flip. So these are actually working and running. Uh, you're going to ask a lot of questions, but we're not really going to answer any questions about them. Are we going to come out with them? Maybe, maybe not. Um, don't know. Maybe never. Uh, we just made a few for employees. We'll see. Uh, we got a couple questions now from Sled. Yeah. So, you know, what, so the first question, which is something that uh, people ask, what is the monetization strategy for Giphy? Simply the same thing that Google does. Uh, sponsored search, sponsored ads. If you watch YouTube, Google, like we're not doing anything new. We're a search company. We're going to monetize the same way Google monetizes. Uh, we've been doing that already. What, what, have, what have been the most interesting or creative brand usage of GIFs? What is the future of brand GIFs? So we just did this thing with um, Pepsi and Bubbly, which with Neil Patrick Harris, who is like such a pro, came in and we, we launched an entire sparkling water campaign with them, which has been really cool. Um, uh, I think that's going to be the future when brands embrace short form content where we can make a lot of content with their products and distribute it in a very authentic way in messaging. So uh, we've made a lot of content that is really seamless that no one really knows is, is an ad uh, because it's actually really good content. Um, so that's kind of where the future will be when content and advertising is mixed. Uh, what was the camera you were holding at the beginning of the session? That is Giphy Camera. It's a little hardware toy that we've been playing with. Any other questions? I think, is that it? Maybe sometime never. <laughs> Don't know. Um, we just made a few uh, just for fun. But I don't know. <laughs> um, where? Where is the room, oh, this is interesting, where is the room for silence and self-reflection in a world where passive micro-content is filling every moment space in our day? Wow, that's like intense. Um, that's probably when you turn your phone off <laughs> um, or go on vacation. But I actually think, you know, what we're talking about is passive content where if it's, a, a lot of the future of content will be passive. It will be, we know, like, you, you just can't keep attention spans going all day, 24 hours a day, every moment of every second. It really is going to be about being able to give people space to relax and giving them landscapes and moments of reflection. And it's kind of like when you listen to, uh, I was going to say Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon, but it's not really not like that. <laughs> when you listen to, like, relaxive, meditative music, uh, we just haven't done that visually, but that will happen soon when people are making content to give you a moment for self-reflection and silence. Uh, and then you'll be able to spend lots of time there. Like, we, we don't have a digital, like, uh, Hawaii or digital, like, Tulum. And that, those things, those spaces need to exist, and someone's going to create that. Uh, 
how many GIFs were created to date? Uh, that's like hundreds of millions somewhere. So, yeah, that, that's like infinite right at this point. You barely mentioned video in your presentation. Save to inform a video platform of yours coming out. Can you expand on this, please? Well, I mean, GIFs, I guess I didn't really mention video, video too much because GIFs are basically video, so and video are GIFs, so they're kind of the same thing. One just doesn't have sound. So in the world of short form video, if you're watching a six second video, you probably want it to loop a bit so you can watch it again because it's too fast. So um, we, I think, the future of, I mean, if we're talking about video specifically, we will come out with, um, Everyone, was, everyone will have to embrace video. Their sound is necessary at some point. Uh, but, but, but primarily, 85% of all, of all videos watched on Facebook are watched without sound. So sound is becoming something that requires attention again. And most of the day that you want to, most of the time you have during the day is, is not very attentive time. Like you don't have the ability to pay attention 23, 24 hours a day. So, a lot, of the a lot of the video you see will have to be in the form of GIFs. Yeah. Did you have any trouble with copyright issues? So um, this, is a this is a good question. This is a question that comes in a, a lot. So one of the reasons, you know, I, when I worked at MTV, I learned a lot about music licensing, and that's one of the most litigious um, fields in the world, if, you, if you've been in that industry. And, being able to get like licenses to music is the hardest thing because you have to pay royalties to not only the musicians but also the the um, songwriters. Sometimes there's unions that worked on the show at the place so you have to pay. And so what we did was, in the very beginning when we were doing this, we went and made license agreements with all of the major movie studios, TV studios, music labels, everyone, sports leagues. Every sports league is on our platform, and so. We've been able to overcome the copyright issue because we actually have licenses to all the content, unlike most of the UGC content out there. So uh, we were able to go and secure all those rights. So we, we've been blessed in that all our partners have been, we've had really good partners uh, that have given us access to their content to create gifts. And we've, we've taken our technology and created all of that for them. So we, we pretty much haven't had problems that way. You know, we, it's been fairly, fairly straightforward. Uh, we're pretty legit about everything, so uh, we've been blessed with that. Giphy's early success seemed to be linked to partnering with native chat platforms like Slack. What new platform partnerships are you excited about new, excited about now? Uh, I think, you know, messaging, everyone knows Giphy and messaging, but I think people don't know that Giphy is in Trello, is in MailChimp is in Outlook, is in uh, Slack too. Yeah, is in, is in pretty much everywhere, but we're really thinking about what is the, again, this is just content being delivered. Where are all the screens? You know, we wanna be in TVs, in billboards, in taxi cabs, anywhere that you can see content, we wanna be a part of that. So, you know, when you think about IRL, like where can we be, where can we go? Um, so I'm excited about all the platforms that we don't know about yet. I'm trying to understand some of these questions. Yeah, a challenge I encounter with Giphy is finding the right words to search for the GIF that I want. Why is this a visual search engine still dependent on text? That's like, yeah, that's like the million dollar question. Billion dollar question? Maybe 20 billion dollar question. <laughs> uh, until we can create, until we have tools to, that can create abstract images. Someday that will happen. It's getting there. You know, if you see what's going on in, in like uh, Instagram stories and Snapchat stories, like people are getting really creative about the way that they create content. Until we get the tools that can create content that quickly, um, we won't be able to. Text will always be there for a while because it's a very good abstract way to represent all thought and communication. Quickly. It's just mostly because we don't have the vocabulary and the 
and the ease of which to input. I mean, can you imagine like a GIF? Like how would a visual thing be? Uh, someone's gonna crack that someday, and I think when we do, do that, that will be a more interesting world where we can communicate not in words. Uh, there, like, the limitation of words, again, trans it's like you're taking the world, you translate it into black and white text, and then you take the black and white text, and then you decompress it back into the world, and there's just, that's just going to be a, a big problem for miscommunication. If you've ever sent a text, you know, I've sent hey, and had people be really, really upset with me because they were like, why are you so angry with your hey? It was like, it was like three letters and I didn't mean it. Or if you just like, you're thinking, if they see the dot, 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 and they're like, wait, you're thinking too long. And now they're really angry at you, like, you, d you don't have an answer for that? So I think there's like a lot of miscommunication that happens in text. So someday that will be different. Um, I think I have time for one more question. What? What role will AI play in Giphy's future to search content? So we have an entire AI pipeline, so um, uh, what, we have a bunch of data scientists on our team. When content's coming in, it's sent through a bunch of different AI pipelines that will kind of categorize them and then serve them up for when you, and it, when you best want that content, right? So uh, for example, just finding all the celebrities and then linking celebrities to like things that are news that are going on. Um, so we, we have a lot of technology on the stack that does that. Uh, okay, I think this, okay, one, I think we have time for one more. Can you make this presentation available? Maybe. <laughs> we'll think about that one. Um, oh. So if we're talking about that, so there, unfortunately, like, sincerely feel bad if any, or apologize if anyone was offended in any way. There was one GIF fell through our moderation filters. Uh, we patched that bug. It was a bug in our filters. We patched it. We, we removed that GIF instantly within a minute. We patched our filters. We remoderated everything, and we're, we're good right now. So again, apologize if, if that's, offended anyone in any way, uh, I take full responsibility for that, but uh, it has been a, f a known problem and fixed. Yeah, so a lot of our, um, we have an NLP pipeline that will take sentences and find better terms. That will be coming out with a little bit more, a little better tech right now. It's being trained, as we speak right now, it's being trained to start taking a lot of human expression and words and sentences and concepts. And we're, we're, it's a lot of metadata for that has been really hard to find when you, know, when you have abstract thoughts and tying them visually. Like, what does that mean? In what context does that mean? Like the context, it's, it's a really hard problem, but we, do, we are working on that problem. And so uh, right now you can search for, for sentences, but the, the actual mapping of the sentences to the sentiment isn't really the best right now. Any other questions? We got like 10 seconds. Yeah, we, we, we do both. So uh, if we're going to make new content, we, we think we, pr we make the best content with the studios. Uh, we can make original content that way because it's six seconds, but we can reappropriate other content, or brands sometimes come with their own content, their own agencies. But we can do all of those. So we, not only can we, you know, we, we can make the content, we can help distribute the content, um, or we can help distribute just your content that you have. Any other questions? Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're integrated into the Facebook comments, so you can use those gifts from Giphy there. It's part of our license. Anything else that's burning anyone? And then I think we're done. Sure.
Oh, sorry, sorry.